Hello everyone. Um, I can see you're all welcoming each other and that's lovely to see. Um, welcome to today's webinar, a fresh approach to online self-access materials for higher level learners. Well, my name is Miranda Hamilton and I work as exam support manager for the business and marketing team for schools. So educating our learners online from home is something that we've all been doing in recent weeks, in recent months. Um, and for many of us as teachers, we've been attempting to recreate our classroom at home using conferencing tools such as Zoom or Teams. But we've also been providing materials for our learners to work on, on their own, from home. So today's webinar explores a fresh approach to the material that we've been developing to support our higher level learners to work on from home independently. Let's take a look at our aims for today's session. So the first thing I want us to think about is what do we mean by self-access? It's got lots of different labels and uh, people are often confused by what each label means and do they mean the same thing? The challenges of self-access for learners, what are they? And this makes us think about learner autonomy, Work learners are working on their own. So what is our fresh approach to self-access? What have we done? What's different? And we'll give you an overview of the materials and we're also encouraging our learners to reflect and plan the next steps. So, clarifying the term, let's check that we all know that we're talking about the same thing. For you, what is self-access learning? So what do you understand by the term? Could you type your ideas, what you think it is from uh, for into the chat box. Okay, so students select their materials. Okay, let's have a look. Independent learning, yeah. Any other ideas there that you would see as self-access? Self-paced, working on a task, independent learning. Self-study, self-study, self-centered access the portal on their own. Plenty of ideas there. Okay, so that is absolutely splendid. Let's move on to the next slide. The dictionary definition. Of course, we're teachers, we go to the dictionary. So the dictionary definition in the Cambridge Dictionary describes self-access as a method in which students use books, videos, etc. to study on their own. And exactly as you've said, this is what uh, what what we what it is? It's self study on their own. But what other terms do we use for self access? Now, I've heard you, I've seen you, put a lot of ideas in there. Independent learning is a ter is a term that we use. Self studying, independent. Okay. Okay. Access through online or printed materials. Let me take a look at what we've got. Uh, what the definition would be so what the other terms are we we'll look you may also hear it uh, called self-directed learning many of you refer to it as independent learning i've seen a number of you call it self-study and a number of you have also said autonomous learning so using that word autonomy that very complex word there so I've got another question for you. And my next question is what type of materials are generally used for self-access? I'm seeing some lovely ideas go past, past here from the previous slide. They use their own, they use their materials. Okay, what types of materials are used? Books and audio, video, websites, articles online courses, books and internet, self-check, books and internet, blogs, plenty of, plenty of ideas there. Okay, I'm gonna to move to the next screen. So examples of 
materials can include, and you've mentioned these already, online print and practice exercises, um, Cambridge assessment, of course, uh, exam practice tasks, which I don't think I've seen go through actually, but uh, on, the, on the chat there, um, essays, assignments, project work, independent reading. So all of these are lovely examples of uh, that learners can use to access material on their own. I want to take a look now at some examples of self-access materials and just to unpick uh, the way in which they're designed. <clears throat> so the first one I'm going to show you is uh, an online practice exercise. It's a new one that's been produced uh, for our website uh, for our higher level learners on discourse markers. Now the learner is invited to, uh, to, to think about, and it's a multiple choice question. So it's a recognition task. So asking them to notice and think about what a discourse marker might be and what the purpose of it is. So they're given the task, but they make their choice. And in this example, with the online example, there's an element or an opportunity for the learners to receive feedback. And in this example, our poor learner made an incorrect choice. So a little bit of feedback with the online practice. Um, what comes after the phrase underlined? So try again. This time our learner gets it, makes a correct choice. And notice again, with our online practice ex uh, exercises, the learner is given feedback to explain why the answer is correct. So that's the online practice. It's a standalone exercise that exists in isolation. So the learners have to find the exercise, complete the practice, and the design of the task is really very good. But it's a standalone exercise. Also, and I've noticed a number of you talk about this now since I've mentioned it, we also have a self-access exam task practice. Now, this is an example that's come from the Exam Booster series from CEP, Cambridge Exams Publishing. And this is a series that's available for all exams. But for this example, we're looking at first and first for schools and it has an answer key provided. And this task is the reading and use of English part three. So we've got exam practice. Um, it doesn't have that element of feedback that you might have if it's a print product. So thinking about what um, the, uh, exam boosters are incredibly useful, I notice. Yes, there are, so very good. Uh, now, I want to see what your thoughts are about online self-access. And I'm curious to find out what your thoughts are. For our learners, I noticed many of you said um, that, um, that, this, that, that, that they choose their own um, question, they choose their own material. So do you think, do you agree or disagree that it's confusing because there's so much choice for learners online? Do you agree or disagree? Cast your votes now. Ah, OK, there's a strong level of agreement there, actually. That's very, very interesting. And yes, I think it can be confusing for learners. But I can see things are moving on. All right, let me go to the next question. And our next question. That it's difficult for learners to know what to choose. Oh, goodness me. Um, yeah. It is, there's a very high agreement there. So they just don't know where to start. So there's some fabulous material out there, but knowing what to choose can be difficult. I'm going to move on to the next question. So do you agree or disagree that learners need teacher guidance to select materials? Got a very high level of agreement there. Yeah, it can be particularly difficult for the teachers are so busy as well. So um, yeah. And there's lots of separate exercises that teachers need to search for. So your thoughts on the next question. Do you agree or disagree that learners need um, a plentiful supply 
of good content. So I'm not sure we're on the reset poll. Okay, hang on. Let me see. Okay, there we are. Ah, oh, yes, it's true. In fact, that's an interesting finding there that you've all mentioned, that you all tend to agree with this, that we have lots and lots of little exercises, but we need plentiful of them. So give them plenty to be working on and to be um, continue to, to be learning on. Okay, let me move to the next slide. So this is a question. I'm not, I wonder what your thoughts are on this one. There's too much focus on practice and not enough focus on teaching. So plenty of practice there. Notice with the online example I showed you, there was some feedback, um, but this is quite limited. And I wonder what your thoughts are. I see most of you tend to agree. OK, let's take a look at the next slide. So I can see we're all on the same page together. So having considered the issues that I think we're all in agreement with, um, that what makes a successful autonomous learner? Now, an autonomous learner thrives when they can take control of their learning, when they're driving it and they know what's coming. Autonomous learners thrive when they make their own decisions about their learning. So that's been found that when it's given to them, they get on with it because they've been told to, but we reach this issue of motivation. And of course, if they've been told to do something, levels of motivation can vary. And autonomous learners really thrive when they can see it's helpful, that what they're doing is going to help them. It's worth their time and their effort. Um, and I see people have said taking responsibility for their learning. So these are really, really key signs of what makes a successful autonomous learner. So with these thoughts in mind, we decided to really rethink our approach to self-access and take a completely different approach. So rather than lots and lots of different exercises to bring together a, a, and provide the learner with a comprehensive learning journey. Let's take a look. So the way in which we're supporting learner autonomy with our self-access lessons is in making it absolutely clear that it has a clear purpose. It's got a target. Learners uh, prepare and they practice and they work towards a specific exam task. And this helps them because they know exactly what they have to do. They have support that's going to guide them. They can see that it's going to help them and it's worth them spending time on. So really important that there's a clear purpose. Also, the structure of the learning journey. These lessons have been designed with a coherently designed series of interrelated activities. So it's not just separate activities loosely threaded together, but they're joined together, taking the learner on a, a journey towards the final practice task. So we're offering learners learner training. I noticed that in the poll, we agreed that one of the problems was that there was more practice and not sufficient training or teaching. And our self-access lessons, the new self-access lessons, have a clear direction with clear outcomes. They're targeted learning with exam practice with an opportunity for them to assess, reflect and plan for progress because lessons and learning doesn't exist in isolation. What we do impacts on what we do in the next lesson and in the lesson after that and in planning ahead. Okay, so what have we got for you? What have we designed? I'm going to give you the list, the menu of 
the new uh, lesson plans that we have available for it for you, um, and you can direct your learners towards these. The lessons focus on very specific uh, tasks from the exam. Um, and they work towards these exams. So you can see that at B2 First for Schools, we have um, six plans, comprehensive plans, and they cover the key parts of the exam. We've even got speaking as a self-access lesson. Um, and at C1 Advanced, we've got five lesson plans and again, covering key parts that we want uh, learners to, to practice and to learn strategies and tips so that they know what to do. Um, so notice I've indicated that you've got the links to the website so you can find, locate these uh, resources. We've also uh, in response to feedback that we were getting from all of our teachers, um, we created a bonus lesson, a self-access lesson, uh, Life in Lockdown. Now, this lesson is designed to be suitable for B2 First for Schools and C1 Advanced. Um, now, we developed this lesson because it was a response to the current context. And what we were finding was, was that learners wanted to talk about their experience they wanted to discuss it it was top of their minds they were they were really concerned about it there was a lot to say so it was developed in response to the current context um, and it's designed to be useful now as we're in lockdown coming out of lockdown but it's also important and has a value for life after lockdown because the experience doesn't just end there learners will still be reflecting on what they've gone through what's happened in these last few months so it's really important to give them the opportunity these are integrated skills uh, lessons so uh, each of the activities are designed to relate to exam type tasks so there we go so what can you expect? I've taken a snapshot. Um, it's not, uh, obviously I can't give you the whole lesson, but you'll notice here from this B2 First for Schools lesson, um, it starts with a tip. This is the speaking lesson. Um, so how to practice speaking, tips for the learner. So things to help them, to make them feel they can continue to practice. But each lesson begins with a summary. Again, here, we've got an advanced self-access lesson for reading and use of English. Uh, the learner has a menu at the top to say what's going to be happening in the lesson. And the lesson starts with a tip, how to improve your reading. And as teachers, how many of us are always saying, read, read, and keep on reading? So here, the learner is directed to uh, useful links to encourage them to read. So what are we talking about with these lesson plans? They are in fact lesson plans um, and they have a parallel to the classroom but the learner is working through them on their own but the voice of the teacher is present within the plan. So there are four phases. The um, lessons uh, open with a warmer. There's a preparation stage where they're practicing and exploring strategies that they can try. And then there's a practice phase where they complete the practice exam task. And the lessons um, end with an assess, reflect and next steps good pedagogical practice. But more than this, we recognise that these are self-access lessons and we need to offer support as well as stretch features for our learners throughout the lesson. So we've um, really uh, provided really nice ideas with workaround ideas for self-access. So you're at home, what can you do? How can you get around the problem of not being in class. We provide learners with 
top tips, you've seen a couple of examples already. We provide learners with how-to boxes and need help boxes. And we all know that uh, learners need breaks. One of the problems with working from home is that they may take too many breaks or they may not take enough breaks and just work straight through. So we acknowledge hard work and we signpost breaks. Literally saying, great work, now take a break. We also offer bonus tasks. So if you want to go that extra step, you can. And then there's next steps with the learning plans, developing their own learning plan. So what do the learners see when they first go into the lesson? We've already seen this a little bit earlier on, but the lessons learn would open up with a summary. A summary, much as you might put on the board to indicate to the learners what's coming up. So this is a note, so they know what's happening. We've already looked at that in a little bit earlier, so we'll move on from here. Let's take a look at a warmer, and we'll go in to looking at the advanced speaking part two. Now, we know that uh, a lot of the practice papers, um, there are so, only so many practice papers that we have available to us and only so many practice tasks. So with this uh, lesson plan, we decided that we'd completely rethink it and turn the, the speaking uh, activity into a research task. So in the aunt, they, we encourage them to use the internet and to search for pictures that capture the topic of the lesson. So we are promoting learner autonomy. We're promoting learner decision making because they have to search their internet and to pick the pictures that they feel best capture this idea of happiness. Now, this is a picture that I found uh, online. I thought it was lovely of a child looking so happy in the summer. Anyway, they choose the best three pictures and just as they might do in the classroom, they brainstorm all these ideas and vocabulary around the topic. And then why not? We encourage them to create their own speaking questions, questions that would encourage a speaker to compare, contrast and speculate about happiness. So we are giving them control of their own activity. However, we also know that it's not easy to write uh, assessment questions. We really, really appreciate that. So it may be very difficult for them to write questions that they can uh, use to in, in, engage in a long, uh, the long term. So we've created for them the need help box. So here we have the learner support and we encourage learners to compare their questions and their pictures with an example, an example taken from uh, the Cambridge C1 advanced exam. And these are really lovely questions. So what, why do you think people might feel happy when they do these activities? Would they make everyone happy? Which do you think is the most enjoyable? And the learner has a choice here. They can either use the questions with their pictures or they can use these pictures with their questions. So we're giving them options to create and develop their own speaking task. But what about workaround ideas? Speaking, self-access, how does that work? Well, many of our learners, uh, well, I think most of our students are all online, chatting, talking to partners, friends from school. Why not talk to your buddy up, find a study buddy to work with. Talk to family and friends if they speak English. Use your questions with them. Embark in a discussion about the topic with them. Use social uh, conferencing tools. And also, for everybody to record their speaking and they can take turns 
as student A and student B with their partner. So they can play back and review and give one another feedback to their study buddy. But no partner, no problem. And this is uh, shown on the lesson plan. So all practice is good practice. So you can role play. The learner role plays the questions, plays the part of student A, uh, of, the in, of the examiner asking the question, and they ask and answer their own questions. But again, recording on a digital device, listening back and giving themselves feedback as well. So there's plenty of work around ideas. Now, let's take a look at some of the tips. Um, one of the things that we uh, worked out was that as teachers in the classroom, we're always reminding our learners of familiar strategies. How many times are we asking them to check the title, to think about the topic before they start reading? Now, our self-access plans make sure that we remind our learners of very familiar strategies. All of the things that they do in class is signposted on the lesson plan. Giving them reasons to engage, it will help you to get started with a text. They've got the tip, but we give them the opportunity to, uh, to, check, uh, to try the tip. So notice how in this lesson, it's designed to give learners choices. So the idea is that we've provided them with sample texts, uh, World Wide Web, mobile phones, plastic, and they check out the links, read the title and the first four or five sentences, decide if this is the article for them, if they're interested enough, if they don't like it, take a look at another one but they choose the article they want to read. Now, something that I think is really an opportunity for our self-access learners, for all of our learners who are working at home. At home, learners can set their own time limits. In the classroom, time is precious and there isn't always a lot of time because you've got to move on to the next thing. And we're constantly, as teachers, um, trying to move our learners through the lesson. But at home, learners can set their own time limits. Now that means that they can try out new strategies to see if they work. So I think this is a great opportunity. I'm going to give you an example of, um, of the task strategies. Now, in one of our papers, uh, lesson plans, um, we have a strategy for called word attack. Word attack is supporting learners to deal with difficult or unfamiliar new vocabulary. Notice the learner works with the article that they have chosen. Clearly, these are authentic texts, and so there will be words that will be difficult for them to understand. So don't worry about it, attack it, word attack. What do they do? How does it work? In the word attack strategies, we're giving them strategies to deal with new vocabulary. Invite them to select three or four words that are unfamiliar to them. Notice that we're not giving them the words because we don't know, they've chosen their own article, but they choose their words. The next step is to stop and to think. Before you check the dictionary, try this. There are a series of strategies in the plan that I haven't included in the slides, but the plan provides strategies to guide learners to work out meaning from context. Now, it's something that learners find particularly difficult and they really struggle and they worry about individual words. So what we're trying to do is help them 
to read and understand for themselves before they jump to the dictionary. But more than that, we have word attack, we have text attack. So strategies to help our higher level learners to understand text structure, to look at this, the text as a whole. So the learner works with the article, remember, that they have chosen. And the lesson plan guides them and suggests ways for them to understand the text structure, text attack. How does it work? They read the text and they're encouraged to try and see the text as a series of six or seven connected ideas. The next step is to take each section of the text in turn and to try and summarize the main idea of each section in two or three words so that they get a feel for the uh, for the meaning of what the whole story of the text is. Notice text attack. So these are really lovely strategies for learners to work on. But more than this, um, we can see that our self-access materials are a great opportunity for our learners to practice research and study skills. Now, one example that we have is a research task and tips using the dictionary. I think too often our learners use the dictionary to find a definition, but don't necessarily see what opportunities there are uh, within the dictionary to help them grow their vocabulary and demonstrate the range of words that they know when they start to write. So here, at the start of the lesson, the learners are told everything in English. Each task in the lesson uh, requires you to do online research. So they know that they're going to be working with authentic uh, texts. They're encouraged to conduct their research on websites that are in English. Now, maybe uh, they would go straight to uh, websites that are in their first language, but we encourage them to work in English. We encourage them to read for the main ideas and not to take, uh, not, not, not to translate the text, just to take notes in English. Again, good study skills. So here is the vocabulary task that uh, that in, has come it is within this lesson. Now, we talked about um, using the dictionary as a research tool. The topic of the lesson is respect, a complex construct and quite difficult for people to necessarily understand. So we're asking the learners to use the dictionary as a research tool, find the meaning and find other ways to talk about respect, creating sentences, talking about respect as a noun, a verb, an adjective, and to find synonyms, other words, to talk about respect, to find multi-word verbs that are often used with respect, and that they should record their research findings in a notebook. Notice this is about research. It feels like a research lesson. Notice they're going to need this later in the lesson. So the tasks within the plan are clearly defined, taking the learner towards the final writing task. Now, in this task, you may recognize it from a sample paper. The language that they've identified in the online research task can now be recycled. Now it's time to write. So the topic is a good role model. Is there somebody you particularly respect? So all of that language they've been researching, they can now demonstrate what they've learned and practice using it. But of course, more about learner training. We're trying to provide the right level of support for the development of writing skills. And there's a really lovely section in the writing plans that looks at planning and organizing ideas and strategies are given for the learners 
to, to, to try. And there are tips for writing a timed essay given. So notice it's a timed essay. So tip number one is check the time, obviously. Tip number two, how many words? Check the word count. Tip number three, well done. Take a break. You've worked hard. So these are all lovely, lovely strategies for the learners to practice. So we're offering them support, not just individual uh, tasks to practice. So what about the bonus tasks? Now, in these tasks, we're encouraging our learners to go the extra mile, to go that step further and to stretch themselves. So to see how much more they can do. Bear in mind, this is not in school. This is self-access. They'll be working from home. So time is on their side. So this is an opportunity for them to think how much further they can go. So in this lesson, this is a reading and use of English lesson. The reading and use of English lesson was focused on part five. The topic in the lesson was technology. The reading was about technology. So we've tried to create an integrated skills lesson by transferring uh, speaking, uh, by, by identifying uh, the topic, looking at a really interesting title. Technology has transformed the way we live, but not always in a good way. Discuss. Now, do you remember what we talked about with the exam tips, with these tips for how to practice your speaking? Talk to your family, chat to friends online, open the discussion, find out, conduct research. So once they've conducted research, once they've thought about their own ideas, they can then go that extra mile with the bonus task, make notes on the ideas, and the ideas and opinions they've collected from their friends and family, and they can plan and write an essay in response to the statement. So that's really turning uh, an exam focused lesson, which is focusing on one part of the paper into uh, an, an integrated skills lesson. The lesson, uh, the lessons, cl uh, close with uh, a closing task and learners are able to put into practice the skills, the tips, the learner training that they've picked up throughout the lesson. And we've been using materials from Exam Booster, uh, thanks to Cambridge uh, Exams Publishing, uh, for the learners to use uh, a task from this book. So we're not using uh, practice tasks from our practice papers. Um, Really interestingly, um, it's really supportive that they've had lots of little activities that come together to guide them towards being able to complete the task. So that's a really lovely opportunity for them. However, this may be the practice task, but it's not the end of the lesson. I noticed uh, I could, I had my eye open. I could see some of your comments coming through. Um, I noticed somebody said, what about the answers? And is there anything about feedback on writing? So I'm here to answer. So yes, there is other support. Answer keys are provided. Um, and I know that many teachers may feel a little uncomfortable or, concerned about giving the learners the keys with the lesson. Um, now, we're giving them responsibility for their own learning. We're giving them control in terms of managing the way in which they complete the lesson. If they wish to check the answers before they've completed the task, that's their concern. But we have to give them the responsibility them to do that. So write and improve. Obviously, we can uh, use write and improve. They can write their task and submit. I'm sure you'll be uh, of, uh, aware of our 
write and improve and you can find it on the website. Um, we've also uh, indicated that there's Tim's pronunciation uh, workshop. Um, so Tim's pronunciation workshop, I noticed somebody else earlier on was mentioned, what about uh, the BBC? Um, well, this is from the BBC and it's a really fun workshop. As you can see from the pictures there, it's, it's lovely, uh, the way in which he works through pronunciation. So I think that's a really nice, nice thing for you to, to guide your learners to, or for learners to be guided towards. Um, let's move on. Okay. So what about next steps? Completing the learning loop. Notice that when we started, we looked at individual exercises. Our lesson plans are a series of practice exercises that take the learners on a learning journey. And the completion of that learning journey is planning where to go next. So the top tip is make a smart action plan an action plan that's specific, uh, measurable, achievable, relevant and time-based. So asking learners to look back on what they've done, to think about what they do next and when, and then that it has to be measurable. How are they going to track what they've learned? How are they going to track their progress, the improvement that they've made? And it should be achievable. We should be encouraging learners to plan for success, making sure that their plan is realistic. So don't set themselves unachievable goals. It's got to be something that is meaningful and achievable. And then for them to think about what's relevant, what was difficult, what do they think and what do they notice that they need to work on? And of course, we all know set yourself deadlines. So it's really important to know what you're going to do, when you're going to do it, and when you will have completed it by. But it's all very well giving them the tip. We also provide learner training within the plan to help them to write their uh, action plan. And this is what the learning loop, the next steps, the learner training looks like. So it's a very simple table. I need to work on, and this example uh, says learning vocabulary on unfamiliar topics. And this is the commitment that the learner has made. I will, no, very determined there, I will use the links in the lesson to find articles about the topics. I will read one article a day. I will record five new words from each article. So you can really see that this learner has a very keen idea about what they want to do. And they're going to read five articles by the end of this week. Now, I think that reading five articles is quite ambitious. So I wonder, as a teacher, it may be uh, helpful to, to, to aim high, but to make sure that it's going to be achievable. So we're giving them help here and creating their plans. So the new self-access plans are informed by robust pedagogical principles. They're built around what we do as teachers in the classroom. All the plans have a very clear target. They know where they're going. It's a clear structured learning journey. There's a sense of direction, clear learning outcomes with uh, they know what to do. They've got support. They can see how it's going to help them and that it's worth doing. So there's plenty uh, of reason for them and for you to direct your learners towards them. So we've taken a fresh approach uh, uh, to online self-access materials and it's not just about the learners, it's also about inspiring the teachers because we'd like you to direct your learners towards these lesson plans so that they can have a, a bank of very comprehensive learning materials that they can work with on their own 
with support from home and that you feel confident about giving them this uh, self, these self-access materials. However, we're not just here to support uh, to support our learners in this webinar. We're also aware that your teachers and you need support as well, and we're able to offer you support um, with our on our website uh, supporting every teacher. So our website, as you know, uh, has blogs and online courses, exam prep and materials, and ranges of materials to help you to support your learners. So there's plenty for you to help your learners, for, to help you help your learners. And this is a great resource for you to, to work with. Um, we've created uh, a free interactive support pack for our learners, for our teachers, sorry. And this gives you really quick access to our exam prep materials, free dig digital resources and games, and plenty of ideas to support you support your learners. So this is more directed towards teaching your learners in class or online. Um, so there's plenty of uh, support there. So Without further ado, I have a few questions. As we have a few minutes for some questions at the end. I hope this was, was helpful for you. So, um, okay, is there a student interactive? Oh, there's Donya. Hello, Miranda. Hello. <laughs> Thank you very much for that really, um, really informative and useful webinar. Um, I've oh, been collecting some questions for you. Um, hmm. So to start off with, um, one of the questions was, how can you motivate your students to do the self-access materials? Well, that's a really good question. And I think um, it's been very hard for our learners. They've been in lockdown at home for a very long time. So one of the things that's really key is for them to be aware that there's, it's going to help them that they can see that if they're planning and working towards an exam before lockdown, learning doesn't, hasn't stopped. They're not left on their own. And these plans are designed uh, to offer uh, teaching and learning and tips and strategies so learners don't feel that they're on their own. They are supported. So the teacher voice is represented giving them encouragement as uh, on the page of the of the uh, of the of the lesson plan so plenty of reason to engage mm. does that help okay yeah i think that's clear um and then some questions about the materials themselves um so one teacher said um students aren't always very good at choosing which websites to go to for research so do we give them guidance or do you have yes. any advice for that? Yes. In fact, we do give them guidance. We recommend websites for them to go to so that they're not left on their own. Remember, being autonomous doesn't mean that the teacher lets go. It means that the teacher is there or we are there to support them. So um, we recommend websites that they might try. So you will have seen that in the reading lesson, we recommended three uh, readings that they might like to explore. But we also recommend websites for them to go to, and those are in the uh, in, in, in workable links within the plans. If you remember at the beginning, we looked at the reading, the reading tip, read, read, read. And there were some links to really lovely websites that they could go to. So they're not on their own. They're supported. OK, thanks. That's fantastic. Um, and then another question about the materials um, was about timing. Are students guided as to how long they should spend on each part of the plans? Yes, in some cases, there are recommendations about how long something should take. And in particular, with the exam tasks, so with the writing tasks, for example. However, um, one of the aspects that we felt was important was that the plans are designed into different blocks of work. 
So the different blocks represent uh, units of work. The learner uh, can spend, is in control. They can choose how long they want to spend on it. The overall lesson plan is identified. We specify that it should take about 90 minutes. In fact, they're so comprehensive and there's so much, it's such a rich uh, plan, so many options for them to explore um, that uh, it can take longer. So a guideline is given, but in fact, they're at home, they're working independently. It's for them to make their choices about how long they choose to spend. And they are B2, these are B2 level learners and C1 advanced learners. So they've got a reasonable sense of how long to work, uh, how long something might take with their English. Okay, and then we have another question here about um, giving feedback to students. So how will teachers um, give feedback to students on this self-access work? And should they be worried about plagiarism? Well, there's two big questions there, mm. actually. So feedback, um, <clears throat> well, the learners will be able to work through the materials um, uh, to, uh, on their own. And I think this is an opportunity for the teachers to, uh, to talk with their learners and say, which lesson plan have you worked on? And to talk through what they've done, the work they've done. So they're working in self-access. They can check their own answers, but the teacher can, of course, step in and use uh, this as an opportunity to discuss and reflect and to think about uh, what the learner has been uh, working on through the plan. So there is an opportunity for the teacher to join in. We're not saying the teachers have no imp input here. Teachers do have an input and uh, encourage your learners to share their reflections and to talk through their, their, their smart learning plan as well. And did you mention plagiarism? Yes, that's right. Is that oh. something that teachers should be concerned about? Do you know, I think that um, it's something we're all concerned about. Um, but in the end, these are self-access plans. And these are learners who we can only give them the best recommendations and guidelines as to the way to approach it. We know that if they plagiarise, they are cheating themselves. And that's the message that this is you're taking responsibility for your learning. And you know if you've cheated, if you've plagiarised. And I think we have to be prepared to hand back that responsibility to the learner and to express that to them as well. Um, they're cheating themselves. So, yeah. Okay. Is there any other question? Um, there's one more practical question and that's about the, the listening um, self-access plan. How can students access the audio? The audio, there are links there and the lesson plan, it's, um, it's, you can look at the lesson plan and it gives you a series of steps to take through that you that you work through to show you where to locate the, the the listening. So you just work through the steps. There are instructions given uh, to show the learner where to find the listening, um, and it's really lovely um, to be able to use materials that are uh, exam practice tasks that are not taken from the exams themselves. They are from materials that we've been so generously supported with from CEP. Brilliant. I think that's it for questions. And um, there are lots of comments about the certificate. Um, some of you are having some problems downloading the certificate. Don't worry because we will email all of you the certificates. Okay, so you'll be emailed a certificate and you'll be emailed a link so that you can watch this webinar again and again and again. Okay. <laughs> okay thank you very much, Miranda. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you, everybody. It's been absolutely lovely. Thank you. Bye-bye.